Okay, this is better. Welcome, happy Sabbath, everyone. It is wonderful to be in God's house today. And I want to give a special welcome to all of you who join us every week on YouTube. For those of you that are here, we have how many that join us every Sabbath online now? About 30 that join us online every Sabbath. And um, we have some subscribers too. So welcome. It's not, uh, we'd love to have those of you that are watching online come and visit us sometime. And we'd like to welcome all of you that are here visiting us today as well. I have just a few announcements. The first one is that we are putting together the, the votes have all been counted. And so our nominating team is coming together as soon as everyone um, has accepted their positions, they'll start um, filling in the positions of our church. So we have, we finally have our own church building and there's lots of things that we need to be done, lots of helpers that we need. And so we appreciate everyone that filled out the survey saying just what they would like to do, the, the areas where they're gifted that they want to help us out with. But we didn't get surveys from everyone. And some of you, um, two of you didn't put your names on it. So if you don't remember putting your name on a survey, please do another one. Um, and that way we can see what you'd like to do. So when our nominating team meets, they can see the different things that people are interested in. If you did not fill out a survey and you would like to, would you raise your hand and we can get one of these surveys to you if you would like to help out in any way. If you've already filled one out, that's great. All right. Okay, our big announcement is that next week we're going to be watching the video, The Gospel of John, together. And so I'd like to invite you all to come out for that. Come at 5.30, bring some snacks to share. Eat food before you come, but it's just snacks. Um, bring snacks to share and find a place to sit and settle in. And we'll be watching The Gospel of John because we're studying... Um, the Gospel of John in our Sabbath adult Sabbath school class. So we will be watching the word-for-word -word movie of the Gospel of John on July 30 and August 6. Now, after the video, we will have um, a Vesper service, and then we're going to have game night. So please come out for that. If you haven't registered for our hometown women's gathering, please do so. Um, the registration information is in the foyer, or you can just register at arcmovement.org. And if you are wondering what it is, and if you should be like a super spiritual person in order to come, or if you feel like you'll sit there and everybody's like closer to God than you are, that's not what, this is just a time for us ladies to get together and refresh our minds with ways that we encounter God through Bible study, through prayer, through fellowship with others. Um, and so it's just a time to just reset ourselves, remember who our Savior is and that he's there for us. So we'll hear testimonies and different ways that people have encountered God. And we'll have a special service on Sabbath afternoon in the evening. Um, if you have a special prayer need or you need anointing for something, um, that's going to be a special service done on uh, Sabbath afternoon, September 17th. And lastly, if you would like a quarterly of this week's lesson, uh, Bible study, there are still a few Bible study quarterlies or Bible study guides on the table in the foyer. Please take one. It's a really great lesson study this quarter called The Crucible. It's about the hard times and how they bring us closer to God. The front of your bulletin, 2 Timothy 3.16, it says, All scripture is given of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, and for instruction in righteousness. And we thank God for his word.
Will those who are able please kneel with me as we pray? Father, we come before you today and we just are here to praise your name. We are so thankful for your sustaining grace. We're thankful for the way you've moved in our lives. Even, even though we can't always see it, Lord, we choose to trust you even when our eyes can't see. And Father, um, today we just reach out our hands to you. We just um, are here to be blessed by you and to be used by you. And Father, um, we thank you for your goodness and your love and mercy. We pray for your healing hand over those who need healing today. We pray for your um, for your grace, for those that need a little extra grace today. Lord, we bring to you our loved ones that aren't walking with you, and we ask that your spirit would move in their lives. For those that need have financial needs, Lord, we know that you have promised to provide for our every need. Not our every want, but our every need. And so, Lord, we bring our needs to you, and we thank you and we praise you for all that you're doing for us, Lord. We are here, ready to receive from you today. In Jesus' name, amen. All of our music leaders are traveling today, and so Dave and I get to lead us out in worship. So I'd like to invite you to stand as we sing together of the wondrous love of Jesus. When we all get to heaven, what a day of rejoicing that will be. our lamb's offering. God has a plan for my life. God has a plan for my life. I just can't wait to see what's in store for Plan for our 
Okay, kids, you can go ahead and have a seat up front, and John and Marilyn Sliney have our children's story today. Good morning. Today we're going to talk about footprints, footprints in the sand. Now, does anyone here know the difference between footprints and shoe tracks? Go ahead. Yep. Yeah, footprints are made by your foot, as shoe tracks are made when you have shoes on your feet. Yep, exactly. <laughs> What else can you do with your feet besides make footprints? Yep, what else? You got it. Run? Yep, maybe dance? Maybe walk a tightrope? Well, some people can walk a tightrope. <laughs> Jump, yep. Yep, you can also kick things. You can kick a football. Some people can kick footballs really good. Yep, and sometimes you can kick a soccer ball, or what people around the world also call a football. <laughs> so, let me tell you a story about footprints. I'll start off by telling you a story. At once upon a time, many, many years ago, I took my oldest daughter to Disneyland. We went to Disneyland, and this is how we used to roll in those days. We would get there right when the gates opened, and we would go all day long. We would just go, 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 all day long. And we wouldn't stop. We hardly stopped to eat. We barely stopped to go to the bathroom. We just went all day long. We would go from 10 a.m. to when the park closed, and I think it was 11 p.m. that night. Anyway, and we went all day long. I remember taking my daughter, Jaya. The park closed, and she wasn't real thrilled that the park closed. She couldn't understand why anyone would let that park close. She was having so much fun. We took the monorail and out the gate. We get outside the gate, and there was a bench. It was a concrete bench, and we sat down on that bench to wait for a van to take us back to our hotel. And wouldn't you know it, at that time of night, the vans didn't run. <laughs> so it was probably about 15, 20 seconds after we hit that bench that Jaya's head went into my lap, and she was asleep. And she was not waking up for nothing. And we had to get back to the hotel, which is about a mile away or so. I remember I picked her up, threw her on my shoulder, and just carried her back to the hotel. And that's something parents will always do for their children. They don't even think about it. You just do it. Well, let me tell you about another story about footprints. Sometimes in life, things really bad happen. We might think God is not there. We might even be angry with God and say, why are you letting this happen? But let me tell you this poem. It's called Footprints, and this version is for children. It's by Margaret Fisher, Margaret Fishback Power. And the poem goes, there were two sets of footprints side by side from dawn to setting sun. Yet there may come a day, my child, when you'll see but only one. Do not think the Lord has left you. Nothing could be more wrong. It's just that he has picked you up to carry you along. You see, God is always with you. Deuteronomy 31.8 says, The Lord himself goes before you and will be, with, will be with you. He never will leave you nor forsake you. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. You see, God is always with you. It's just sometimes like the parents pick up their children and throw them over their shoulder and carry them because the children need that help. Sometimes God's doing the same thing. He's picking you up, carrying you along to get you through those troubled times. Thank you. Amen. We have a Savior that is living and he is there for us. He lives. He's in the world today, and he's there with us.
his blood that has saved us, that washes us white as snow. How many of you are thankful for the blood of Jesus? I am thankful for the blood of Jesus.
Happy Sabbath, church family. How are you all doing today? <laughs> Fantastic? Okay. I thought I heard terrified. I'm like, whoa, wait. We're going to have to stop and have more music. Um, did you guys bring your amen again? Yes. There we go. There we go. I think from our sermon from last week, we learned that amen is not just a word, but it's a who, it's a person, it's Jesus Christ. And do we need the Jesus more than ever? Do we need the great amen more than ever? Amen. This week, I mean, I, I can't help but starting off this week, but if you saw through the news what was going on, there's just so much more violence that, keep, that seems to be coming forward and just seems to be proliferating. I mean, this week we had... We had a couple of outbreaks of violence, and because, I don't know if it's because of the, the cell phones, we have more video all over the place, but, I mean, there was a, a few attempts on people's lives that were, that were actually caught on video, and you probably saw the one that was maybe um, caught on video when one of uh, a potential governor was, was speaking at a rally in front of a million people, and it just seems like there just seems to be more and more of this going on, and I ask my question, myself, are, are we rejecting the Holy Spirit? Is the Holy Spirit starting to, to remove his presence because we don't want him? Now, I'm not saying we, but as, as the world, right? And I think more than ever, we need the great amen in our lives. When I look at the political world, when I look at the religious world, when I look at the general population... It seems that we are all connected to something or tethered to something, connected to something. When I look at our church family, I ask myself, what are we tethered to? What are we connected to? Should we be tethered to anything? Hmm. Oh, there's my sermon. I'm going to sit down now. I was about 10 years old. Do we have any 10-year-olds in the building? Nine? Eleven? Ten. Physical 10-year-olds. Nine, stand up. So I was probably about this tall, me and my cousin. Thank you. And um, it was during the summer, and I had this cousin where I would go spend the, the, the summer vacation or holidays with him, and he lived down south in Chino. And then he would also come up to where we lived here in Reetley, and he would spend time with us. And so we'd always go back and forth during the holidays and during the summer. And this time, he came to visit me. Now, I lived in Reetley, and we lived in the country. And we actually lived on a school property, the Great, Great Western um, School, elementary school. And so we actually lived on the school property. But around the school property, there was some, if I think about it, there was some... Um, Oh, yeah, in fact. Well, anyways, behind the house, there was this great field of vineyards. It would kind of slope down maybe about 10 feet, and then there was this great field of, or this big field of, of vineyards, of, of grapevines. And I was about 10, my cousin was about 10, and he came over to visit. And of course, being 10-year-olds, being boys, we, we were full of adventure, and we wanted to excitement and explore and so we're like, we're going to go explore that field. We're going to see what's on the other side of the field. And so we walked out of our, my house, and so we walked out, we went to the side, we went around the fence, and then we went down this slope, and now we were behind my house, and there was a slope that went down into the field. And so as you went into the field, there was a road that went this way, and then there was a road that went this way. We decided to go down this road to see what was way on the other side of the field. They had just irrigated the field about a week earlier. So you could see that some parts were dry, but you saw these other parts where the top of the, the dirt was, was dry, but it was cracked. And so you knew underneath that it was full of mud. So what we were doing is we we're walking around as we're going down this, this dirt road. We'd, we'd go around the... the, the um, the mud spots and we'd make sure we were really careful and as we were halfway down this road we started to hear some a pack of dogs way way 
way off. And we're like, oh, okay. There was always a pack of dogs that would run around, a couple of pack of dogs that would run around out there in the country. And I, we didn't think anything about it. And so we kept walking. But then we started to realize it started to get closer and closer. And then finally we stopped because it was so close that the dogs were howling. We couldn't tell which way they were coming because since we were in this little kind of ravine, I guess if you, well, not a ravine, but the, the, we were down kind of in this, in this area and we were sur- surrounded by higher ground, when the dogs would howl and, and bark, it seemed like it would echo. And so we stopped and we're like, which way are we supposed to go? And so we stopped and then we were listening and they kept on barking and you could hear them running. And then we realized finally that they were in front of us but out to the side. And so being that tall, I couldn't look over the grapevines. We couldn't look over the grapevines, but we just knew that the dogs were over there behind the grapevines and they were running down this other road. And pretty soon they would end up on this road and would have to turn left towards us. So I told my cousin, run. So we started to run. I was a little bit older than him, so I ran a little bit faster, but I was was trying to hear him run. And as we were running, I heard this noise. I mean, we're trying to avoid all these these mud holes and stuff and and I was telling him follow my steps and so he was following my steps but then I I realized I didn't hear a thud on one of the steps when he was running and so as I look around I can still see it in my mind right now he put his foot in one of those look like a dry area but underneath was mud and then I could see his his foot just just the ground cover his foot and then I could see the mud cover his ankle. And then I could see the mud get all the way basically almost up to the knee. And I was like, oh, man, we're in trouble. And I could hear those dogs coming around that corner. And those dogs, and I could see the, the dust that was, that was down the way. And there was my cousin that was stuck. And, you know, I loved my cousin dearly. And even to this day, I would give my life for him. But there he was, stuck in the mud. What are we tethered to? What are we stuck in? Let's pray. Dear Lord, um, we thank you for your blood, your blood that covers us, and we thank you for your forgiveness and just, just that you're mindful of us and that you're looking out for us, Lord. And I ask that your blessing will be upon us as we dive into your word that your spirit will be here with us, Lord. And I ask that your spirit be with those that are traveling and um, those that are on vacation and those that are at cat meeting right now, Lord. May you be with them and be with those that aren't here. We ask that your spirit will go out and touch their hearts and their minds. And Lord, you know my prayer always. Forgive me of my sins. Empty me of my pride. Fill me with your spirit. And may this sermon be yours. In Jesus' name, amen. So if you're like me, I always have to look up the the meaning of words. How many of you know what tethered means? Okay. Maybe some of you guys are shy and want to raise your hand. I, you know, when I saw that word, I had, I knew it meant to be connected to something, but in my mind, I had this, this thing that everything was frail, frayed like a rope, but that's not true. What tethered means, it means tie with a rope or a chain so as to restrict, restrict its movement. Um, used in the digital world today, it means to use a digital device like a smartphone in order to connect to a computer or other device to the internet. And I'm like, okay, how many of you guys remember tetherball? Same word, okay, so I, now I understand. My wife's all like, well, don't you know what tetherball is? And I'm all like, oh, that's what it means. <laughs> I mean, it was a ball, right? You had a ball and you had this rope that was tied to the ball and that was tied to the, the pole. And so the ball could only go so far and it was called tethered ball, tether ball. And so that's what this word tether means. Now, as we think about this word tether, should we be tethered to anything of this world? No, that's right. First John chapter two, verses 15 through 17 1 John chapter 2, verses 15 through 17 says this, Do not love the world or anything in the world. If anyone loves the world, love for the Father is not in them. It's basically saying if you're going to love the world, then you can't really love the Father. 
Verse 16, for everything in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life comes not from the Father, but from the world. Then verse 17, the world and its desires pass away, but whoever does the will of God lives forever. So in this verse, it tells us that we should not love the world, or we shouldn't be tied to the world the desires of the world. And, 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 you know, it lists us three things there that, that it describes what the desires of the world are, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, the, the pride of life. To have these desires of wanting to have these things that, that will get us away from God, that will separate our relationship from God, is to be of the world. And John is telling us that you can't pursue that, and you can't pursue God at the same time. I think of these three things, and I think if we were to kind of maybe sum up some of the things in this world today, maybe categories, we could think of um, love of making money. I think a lot of people fall in love with trying to make money, and they can't think of anything else. Or the love of things. We want that new car, we want that new house, we want that new phone, we want that whatever it is. It could even be something as small as that donut. Or the love of self-promoting, I really have to say that because when you look at Instagram, you look at TikTok, you look at Facebook, it's just really a lot of it is people self-promoting themselves. I think we can make a list that's even more specific. Are we tethered to drugs would be a an obvious one, alcohol, or I'm going to say this, are we tethered to a certain political party or opinion? Because the really only opinion that we should really know that matters, that leads to eternal life, is the opinion of God. Are some of us tethered to Facebook? Don't raise your hand, but how many of you spent two or three hours looking through Facebook and seeing what everybody else is doing? Or Instagram? Or TikTok? Are some of us tethered to our jobs? We can be tethered to so many things. But you know, here's the key with Jesus Christ, with, with, with God, with the power of the Holy Spirit. We don't have to be stuck we don't have to be tethered to these things psalms 107 psalms 107 verses 13 and 14 says this then they cried to the lord in their trouble and he saved them from their distress he brought them out of darkness the utter darkness and broke away their chains We don't have to be chained or tethered to our desires or the desires of this world. The world's desires eventually, we saw, will lead to darkness, depression, loneliness. But we are not destined for this path. And, you know, we think about all these big things, like I mentioned drugs and alcohol. But you know what's, what they're saying is probably causing the most depression and darkness in people's lives right now? Feeling loneliness? Is social media. Is the Facebook. Is the Instagram. Is the TikTok. This is what's causing more depression in our society now than anything else. They say for a couple of reasons. You're looking at it and do they post only the bad stuff that happens to them? Do they post the fight that they got into last night? Or do they post them like by the pool and all happy with their drinks or whatever? It's always this constant, constant feeding of the mind that we have to have this life that is always perfect. And then when you don't have that life, it doesn't make you feel that great. But they're also saying just the, the staring at the electronics and that light just pulsating at you all the time is bringing depression into the world. But here's the cool part. If we turn to Second Peter, 
chapter 1, verses 3 and 4, 2 Peter chapter 1, verses 3 and 4, it says, By His divine power, whose divine power? His, God, has given us everything we need for living a godly life. We have received all of this by coming to know him, the one who called us to himself by means of his marvelous glory and excellence. And because of his glory and excellence, he has given us great and precious... Now let me start over. He has given us great and precious promises. And what did we learn about promises last week? They're all what? What? Let me start over. What did we learn last week about promises? They're all? In who? Jesus Christ. Okay. There we go. Amen. Thank you. These are, the, these are the promises that enable you to share his divine nature and escape the world's corruption caused by human desires. So it's the power of God. It's his promise that he promised you that you can have a better life without loneliness, without depression. That you can have a a life that is conquering. That you can have a life that is not tethered to these things that the world likes to, to, to bind us down with. That you can break the chain. That you can rip the the rope. I think all of us, since we're here today, would say that we shouldn't be connected or tethered to the world. And that, I think you already said it already, some of you, we should be tethered to who? Jesus. In Hebrews chapter 6, verse 18, it says this, So God has given us both his promises and his oath. These two things are unchangeable, because it is impossible for God to lie. Therefore, he who, he who have fled to him for refuge can have great confidence as we hold to the hope that lies before us. We need to hold, or we need to chain ourselves, or we need to rope ourselves around God. And it says that we need, to, we need to hold on to what? His promises and his oath. It's the same thing as the amen that we learned. His promises are always yes in Jesus Christ. His oath, what he says, his name is behind it. He has promised that we will have refuge, that we will have a time of rest, that we will be able to get rid of these things in our life. So then I ask myself, as a church here, do we want to be a church full of his people holding on to his promises and his oath? I think we do. I think we do. And as a group, as a family here, I think there's this this verse in Ecclesiastes chapter 4, verse 12, that I think that we can use to define what we want to be. It says, a person stands alone, or a person standing alone can be attacked and defeated, but two can stand back to back and conquer. Three are even better, for a triple braid cord is not easily broken. We need to be a church that stands back to back. We need to be a church that stands together. And this is how we stand together. You remember, oh, maybe it was about three weeks ago, we, we talked about the image of God. And we had the image of God. We had, we had if I can remember, it was Simon, Evan, and, and Sienna up here representing God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. And then we brought up John up here, and he represented Adam, but he was by himself. 
And then we brought Marilyn up here, and she represented Eve, but Adam by himself did not, did not seem to be the image of God. And Marilyn, Adam, and, 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 and John together did not seem to be the image of God. But then when we added God to the three of them, then it reflected the image of God. So here as a church, me, you, and God have to stand together. Once we stand together, all three of us, then this church will reflect the image of God. And once we stand together with God, this church, this this. This braid will not be broken. Do we believe in the power and the promises of God? Amen. I like that. Do we believe in his redeeming power? Amen. Do we believe that he has the power to change us? If that is true, do we believe that he has the power to change anyone? then whoever walks through those doors, we don't have to be afraid of. Whoever walks through those doors, I would like to say it this way, we'll be in three categories. The first category, whoever walks through those doors have already gone through a miracle. The second category, whoever walks through those doors could be in this category, that they're in the middle of a miracle. And then there's a third category. Whoever walks through those doors will experience a miracle. And that miracle, if the power of God is here, will be the miracle of a changed life. And this is very cool because when they walk through that door and we, we bring them in, we bring them part of the family, we get to witness the miracles of God. Can we stand together as a church, back to back, shoulder to shoulder, face to face, and pray with each other? John chapter 13, verse 35 says this, Your love for one another will prove to the world that you are my disciples. So what is supposed to tether us together? The power of love is the power that God can change us. We need to be tethered together by love. So what does that mean to me? I'll tell you what that means to me. That means that nobody should leave this church. I'm talking about visitors. I'm talking about members or wherever you're at in that scope. That nobody should leave this church without anybody saying hi. That nobody should leave this church with at least three or five people telling you hi. And I'm going to give you some of permission. If you know, Some people like to sneak in halfway or like right when the sermon starts and then when they know the sermon ends they run out i'm going to give you guys permission to run out after them i won't feel offended if you see people running out there and the whole church got up and ran out there i'll have a good time with god and myself okay that's what it means for for me that no matter what or who comes through that door even if they don't think like me even if they don't believe the way i believe But we're here together under God. We're under his protection. We're under his love. We're tethered to him. So what should we be tethered to? Of course, God's promises, to his oath, to his love, to each other, and to him, and to his word. It was the summer, and I was 10 years old. I turn around and I see my cousin. He's stuck in the mud. The mud's all the way up to almost his knee. 
I run to him. I grab his arm and I start to pull him. And he starts to pull. And as I pull, I could, the mud just like that suction, you could just hear it come. And I'd pull him. And out of the corner of my eye, I could see that the dogs were running around the, or turning the corner. And I said, we got to go. And so I grabbed him and I pulled him one more time. And I'm just like a prayer, Lord, help me. And my cousin said, my shoe. And I said, forget your shoe. And whew, pulled him out. I never ran faster in my life in that day. We ran and we didn't even run up the little, the little slope. We ran up the, the side of the, of the embankment and, and my fence was about this high and we just like jumped over it. We jumped over the fence and we ran inside the house and we didn't even look. And all we could hear was the dogs barking and howling. And I looked at my cousin and I said, they got your shoe. <laughs> they got your shoe. Ecclesiastics chapter 4 verses 9 and 10 says this, Two people are better off than one, for they can help each other succeed. If one person falls, the other can reach out and help. But someone who falls alone is in real trouble. Whoever walks through this door, if you're in trouble, you should not leave this church not being helped. The world right now, as it seems like things are escalating and escalating, and if we look at this through kind of the prophetic eye, we say to ourselves, is this the time of Jesus' near coming? If that is so, it's just going to escalate more and more and things are going to happen even more and more. Will we be here for each other? This is the time that we need to let go of the world, those things that are holding us back, that we need to hold on to each other here, encourage each other, no matter what our backgrounds are, no matter what we believe or don't believe. Let this church not be a church in name alone, but be really filled with his spirit and his love. Let the Ark family not just be a name, but an actual family where we come together and we support each other and we encourage each other. It was so great to be in the Sabbath school this morning. And even Joy said it was great to see everybody smiling and having joy. And you just saw everybody just going back and forth. And you could tell, like we talked about last, last week, Everybody was bringing each other higher and higher and higher. And you could just see the mood get higher and higher and higher. Is that the church family we're going to be? I believe we are. And I think we're making steps towards that. So let go of the things of this world and reach for God. As a church, let's reach for God. And while we're reaching for God, let's just bring everybody with us. There's enough room in heaven. Let's pray. Dear Lord, I thank you so much for your wonderful promises, and I thank you that you are here with us, Lord. May this church reflect your image. May this church be filled with your fruits, Lord. May this church be filled with love, joy, peace. May we all come together as one. May people look at this church and say, these are true disciples of Jesus. Lord, and we thank you for the wonderful gifts that you've given us all. May we learn to use those gifts for each other, for you, and for this world that is heading into darkness. In Jesus' name, amen.
knowing such a friendship to be with you my god and bow our heads dear lord we we just want to be fully connected to you we want to hear your voice we want to hear your direction and lord may we just dive into your word and lord may we just be connected to you and connected to each other and may we continue to uh, encourage each other until your great day in Jesus' name, amen. I want to invite all of you to Potluck over there at the Lifeboat. Um, I'm going to be actually heading to camp meeting, so I will tell all of you bye right now.